We know that many people nowadays want to change themselves. But the reality is, the number of those who want to change themselves is very low compared to those who want to change others before they change themselves. We hear people saying, I want to change the world. I want to be the first one to change the world. I want people to become better. But very rarely do we hear people saying, I want to start with myself first. The Almighty Allah commanded us in the glorious Quran to change ourselves first before we change others. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Verily Allah will not change a condition of people until the people change the condition of themselves first. We want people to become closer to Allah and we are far away from the Almighty Allah. I get messages from people, emails saying, I want to become a da'i. I want to call people to Islam. And if you ask this person if he prayed Fajr in the Masjid, he says no. Did you pray Dhuhr in the Masjid? No. Did you pray Asr in the Masjid? No. Then how do you want to call people to that if you are not implementing that yourself? We want people to be grateful. We want them to thank the Almighty Allah. But yet, we ourselves are ungrateful. We look at the other person's bounties that Allah gave him and we say, why does he have what I don't have? How come he's rich and I am poor? Why? When we look into these stories of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the companions, we see that the way they used to live is completely different than the way we live. They were grateful to the Almighty Allah. They used to thank Allah for everything and they had very little. But that little compared to what we have is so much because they had Islam. We have Islam, but we're not grateful for that. So we should be pleased with the things that we have. And we should start with ourselves we start before we start with others. Change yourself first. Do an analysis about yourself. Who am I? Am I pleased with what Allah gave me? Then, after you change yourself, Allah will make it easy for you to change others. Look at yourself. You pray, you fast, you give sadaqah, you go for hajj or you intend to go for hajj, you testify there is no God except Allah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. You have all of this. You see some people, non-Muslims, who worship cows, they worship the fire, one worships mice, one worships a man, one worships an idol, he has a PhD, he is a scientist, he is a doctor, he's an engineer, but yet he worships a cow, he worships a mouse, he worships the fire, he worships a man, and you, you worship the Almighty Allah. So you have everything. Whereas those people, they have nothing. If you don't have Allah, you have nothing. And above all of this, Allah gives you bounties. What kind of bounties? Your eyes, you could see with. Your nose, you could smell with. Your mouth, you could talk with. You could taste with. Your hands, you could touch with. You could pray with. Your feet, you could walk with. You could bow down to the Almighty Allah. So you should start with yourself and be grateful. Another way we could start with ourselves is to avoid envy. Avoid hasad, envy. You see somebody who has something you don't have and you wish that is taken away from him and given to you. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, envy eats out your good deeds just as fire eats out wood subhanallah envy eats out your good deeds just as fire eats out wood you pray five times a day you fast you give sadaqah charity you're doing everything on time but one day you see somebody who has something you don't have you wish to have that you wish is taken away from him you lose all your good deeds in the blink of an eye, hasad, envy. 
Qabil and Habil, the children of Adam. Allah bless them. Habil, a righteous man. Qabil, an envious man. Habil, wanting to get married to his sister from the other womb. Qabil, wanting to get married to the same woman, the same girl who is his sister from the same womb. You see, the children of Adam, Eve, she used to give birth to two children from one womb. She had two wombs, a boy and a girl. The, the boy and the girl in one womb, they cannot get married to each other. The boy in one womb gets married to the girl in the second womb. Habil was allowed to get married to the girl. Qabil was not allowed to. So what did he do? He became envious. He wants to marry that girl. He saw his brother one day and he said, I am going to kill you. And his brother said, if you stretch out your arms to hurt me, I will not stretch out my arms to hurt you. His brother threw a stone on him. He fell unconscious and he died. Due to what? Envy. What was the result? He killed his brother. Did he get married at the end to that girl? No, he didn't. What does this teach us? When you become envious, you gain nothing. There is no good with envy. Adam was in Jannah. Iblis, the devil, was in Jannah. Allah commanded Iblis to bow down to Adam, to glorify Allah for what he created. Iblis said, I'm better than him. You created me from fire, you created him from clay, I'm better than him. Allah kicks out Iblis. What does Iblis do? Does he say, oh Allah, forgive me? Pay attention to this. Allah kicked out Adam for disobedience and Allah kicked out Iblis for disobedience. When Adam was kicked out, he said, oh Allah, forgive me. So Allah forgave him, put him on this earth, then he returned to Allah to a better paradise. When Iblis was kicked out, he said, oh Allah, give me a long life so I could misguide them. So Allah put him on this earth, gave him a long life so he could misguide whomsoever follows the misguidance. Then he goes to the hellfire. So when you turn to Allah and you ask Allah, Allah forgives you. Had Iblis turned to Allah and said, Oh Allah, I made a mistake, forgive me. Allah would have forgave him, but he didn't do that. We ask Allah to protect us from envy, a serious matter. It is spread in amongst the scholars, the da'is, the Muslims, those praying five times a day. It is widely spread. It's a disease in the heart that needs to be purified. It needs to be clean. So how can I avoid envy? When I see somebody who has something that I don't have, I say, MashaAllah, or I say, Allahumma barik lah. Oh Allah, bless him for what he has. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us. When you see somebody, when you see something you like in somebody, say, Oh Allah, bless him for what he has. And it's okay for you to want what he has, but after you make dua for him and ask Allah to bless him. That is the good envy. There is no harm in that. You don't lose your good deeds. When you pray for him, you ask Allah to bless him and you still want that thing that he has without any jealousy. Brothers, we need to start with ourselves before we start with others. And when we do, Allah will change our conditions. Then we could change the condition of this earth and the people on it. A lot of corruption is being widely spread. And we know that only the strangers, only the strangers will be safe and only the strangers receive the glad tidings. The Prophet Muhammad said, بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود غريبا فطوبى للغرباء Islam began as something strange. Nobody knew it. When the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him started teaching Islam, people were like, what is he doing? They threw stones at him. They didn't know this new religion. It was strange. وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا And it will become strange again, the messenger told, told us. It will become strange again. فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَاء So glad tidings to those strangers. They asked the messenger of Allah, Who are those strangers? Who are they? He said, 
الَّذِينَ يُصْلِحُونَ عِنْدَ فَسَادِ النَّاسِ Those who rectify themselves and others when they see corruption. Those who rectify themselves and others when they see corruption. Those who rectify themselves and others when they see corruption. Brothers and sisters, you could start with yourself. It's very easy. You could start with yourself by detaching yourself from this world, detaching yourself from this dunya, and attaching yourself to the hereafter. Detach yourself from this dunya, like Talha ibn Ubaidillah, and attach yourself to the hereafter, to paradise, like the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By doing so, Allah will help you start with yourself. Asceticism, as zuhd What is as zuhd Asceticism. This is for me to detach myself from this dunya, and to attach myself to the next life. For to detach myself from this dunya, why? Because I know that this dunya, this life is temporary. This life is temporary and the next life is for eternity. So I detach myself from it. Subhanallah, there is nothing good you could gain in this dunya except the remembrance of the Almighty Allah, except the belief in Allah and good deeds. Other than that, there is no good in this dunya. We ask Allah to protect us. Asceticism, az-zuhd, if you embrace it, then Allah will help you start with yourself. What is asceticism? That is, for example, if you have one million dollars and it decreases to two hundred thousand or one hundred thousand dollars, you don't get so sad, you don't pull your hair, you don't commit suicide. Why? Because you know Allah decreed this and you know that Allah took it away from you and He could give it back to you anytime. Asceticism, if you have one million dollars and it increases to ten million dollars, you don't get happy, you don't celebrate, you don't party. Why? Because you know that Allah could take it away from you the next day. Or you know that you could lose your life the following moment. Asceticism, as zuhd Subhanallah. Detach yourself to the next life. And Allah will give you this life and the next life. And there is no harm for asking for this life. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, give us in this life good. And give us in the next life good. And protect us from the hellfire. This is mentioned in the Quran. Some people say, why should I ask for this dunya? I should only ask for the next life. No, that is wrong. Allah mentioned in the Quran, first the dunya, ask for the dunya. There is no harm. It is your train station to paradise for eternity. We ask Allah to protect us. We want asceticism. We want a zuhd. Why? By doing so, we could start with ourselves.